9 million gallons of Slurpee are churned out across the planet every year, enough to fill over 13 Olympic-sized swimming pools. But no matter where you get yours, each flavor of Slurpee tastes exactly the same. It's really complicated, right? You have different water, you have different environmental conditions. But the Slurpee in Russia tastes like the Slurpee in Canada, tastes like the Slurpee in Detroit, Michigan. The original Slurpee was discovered by accident when a Dairy Queen owner named Omar Nedlik popped open some sodas he'd left in his freezer in the 50s. They were a hit. But if you drank one of Omar's frozen sodas today, you probably wouldn't recognize it. As food scientist Maya Warren explained to me, You can't just take um, a soda and necessarily freeze it and expect it to be just like that um, Coca-Cola Slurpee that you get from 7-Eleven. I tried it anyway. My first soda exploded, and the second one didn't have much flavor. It turns out that three key components, temperature, carbonation, and sweetness, have a pretty complicated relationship. And it all starts with this machine. Each Slurpee machine contains a barrel surrounded by refrigerant. This keeps the flavor mixture cold. As the mixture flows into the barrel, it begins to freeze and is scraped from the sides to form fluffy ice crystals. The unique thing about these crystals is that they're colder than your typical ice. And this is because of the sugar. The sugar can act very similar to salt. Imagine, you know, you driving on the road and you see a salt truck in front of you. They're putting salt down on the road to lower the point of freezing. The constant motion from the barrel and the added carbonation allows the Slurpee to be served at a sub-freezing temperature of 28 degrees. Carbonation and coldness desensitize our taste buds, making flavors less potent. This explains why my frozen Coke experiment failed. To turn a well-known carbonated drink into a Slurpee, the concentrate has to be many times stronger for the frozen formula. Flavor formulas are closely guarded secrets, so it's no surprise that 7-Eleven didn't want to talk to us about it. But in general, scientists achieve this through trial and error. As for that killer brain freeze you get when you down too much wild cherry Fanta, that's just the price you pay for guzzling a drink that's much colder than it seems. If you like this episode of Gut Check and you want to see more, click here. Many sounds you hear in movies are created in a studio like this one, using a variety of props. And among the most unusual of these props is food.